Welcome to Fiction Novel Narratives. Chapter 121 Meeting Back in the Familia, August and Ace headed straight to their room. After the last gotcha draw, August proved his non-whale status. Now, August had no shortage of food and drink, everything was covered. As soon as they returned, August intended to take a bath and relax. However, Ace hugged him from behind. What's wrong? Just wanted to hug you. It's not even night time yet. Isn't it a bit early? Suddenly, Ace's face turned completely red. Even though August had thoroughly eaten her before, she still felt shy, especially when August brought it up. You pervert, always thinking about dirty things. Ace, you've changed. You used to blush and lower your head. You. Ace didn't know how to respond. Had she changed? Yes, she had changed. She had changed a lot. Now, she was completely different from the Ace in the past. Three months ago, all she thought about was getting stronger. Today, she came back thinking about how deep they could go in the dungeon tomorrow and how many monsters to kill. But now, her mind was filled with the image of this man, and there was no room for anything else, except getting stronger. All right, today, I'll take good care of my princess Ace. Saying that, August lifted Ace like a prince carrying a princess in a fairy tale. What are you going to do? Ace was a bit flustered because August often did things she considered inappropriate. I said I'd take care of my princess Ace today. I don't need you to take care of me. Let me go. No, after running around with me so much today, dusty and windblown, you need a good bath. I can do it myself, don't. Yes, you can. He lifted Ace and headed to the bathroom. Although it was just a stand-up shower since it was the familiar manor, not many people had this kind of treatment. Most familiar members used the public bath, so having a shower like this was quite rare. August was assigned here initially because of the ability of the king's treasure. Finn arranged it specially to get closer to August. So, August carried Ace to the bathroom. Soon, clothes were thrown out, and then... At the same time, in the meeting room of the Loki Familia, the three top executive of the Loki Familia, along with Loki herself, were present. Finn, I heard that you understand that you're going to the dungeon with August. Gareth asked curiously. It was understandable that he was curious because Finn was usually busy with many things. The next expedition was already in preparation. Yes, both Reveria and I will go. Of course, August and Ace will join, along with Tiona Enshin. Oh, and also Leffy Ya. Huh, quite a few people. What do you plan to do subjugate the floor boss? No, the expedition is coming up, and August is going again. I want to see how strong he is now. After all, he is more important than the results of the expedition. I see. This is an expedition, not a joke. Gareth nodded, he had walked step by step to where he was now. There were times when he almost couldn't come back because of the dungeon. The dungeon was dangerous, and people could die at any time. By the way, that kid August, when we updated his status last time, all his stats reached 999. Haloki, are you serious? Yes. That means August only needs one more great feat to level up. Not exactly. He said he wanted to wait until he broke the limit of S rank before leveling up. After all, he's been like this since level 1. This conversation made the entire meeting room fall into silence. Whether it was Finn, Reveria, or Gareth, all of them were speechless. They had never reached the level of 999 for all attributes, breaking the limit of SSS 1500, and at most, two attributes had reached over 950. The others were at most two or three hundred. August, with his all-around warrior abilities, was simply a monster that had never appeared in ancient or modern times. Moreover, this monster's growth rate was extremely fast. From level 1 to the current level 3 with all attributes at 999, it only took a little over two months. This made them feel like they had lived their half-lives in vain. Oh, by the way, let me share something with you. Be mentally prepared. Huh, what's going on? That kid already has eight skills and magic combined. So, if he shows something amazing during the expedition, don't be surprised. It's normal. 
Loki said so, but after saying it, a slight smile appeared on her lips. What did you say eight skills and magic are you kidding, Loki? Finn was shocked and shouted. Not only him, but Reveria and Gareth were equally shocked. Especially Reveria, because August was the one she had picked up, and she never expected to pick up such a super big monster. It's true. That kid is not an ordinary human. Not a human. In that moment, all three leaders were stunned. Then their faces gradually softened. What race is he elf beastman other race? None of those. None of those that's also true. He's not much different from a little monster. Could it be that he's a descendant of the spirit? Spirit, was a representative magical race and was also known as nymphs, elementals, salamanders, gnomes, tonitras, lux, undines, and shades. It was universally recognized as the race closest to the gods. Therefore, they were also called the most beloved children of the gods or the incarnations of the gods. In the ancient times before the descent of the gods, they were guided by the will of the gods to eliminate monsters and assist humans, existing as heroes. In the magic sword technique passed down in Orario, it was the technique given to humans by the spirits in ancient times. In the original work, Welf Krazo, inherited the power of the spirits after saving them and gained the ability to forge magic swords from the bloodline after receiving Falna, so, associating August's monstrous strength and growth rate, Finn subconsciously thought of spirits. None of those. The kid's race, none of us have ever heard of. Haloki, you haven't heard of it either what race is it? The gods were omniscient beings. If even the gods didn't know the race, it became interesting. Demon Clan. Loki slowly spoke out that name. Chapter 122 Secret Meeting Demon Clan I've never heard of such a race. Me neither. Finn and Gareth both shook their heads, indicating their lack of knowledge. Subconsciously, their gaze turned to Reveria, after all, she was of the elf royal family, as an ancient and long-lived race, possessed the most knowledge and information about ancient times within their lineage. Don't look at me. I don't know either. There's no record of such a race within our library. After being friends for decades, it was natural for them to understand what these two were thinking. All right, don't think too much about it. It doesn't matter what race August is. He's our companion now, our child. No matter who he is, he's family. At this moment, Loki spoke up. Finn, Gareth, and Reveria exchanged glances and burst into laughter. Indeed. Regardless of August's race, it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Now, August was Loki familia member, their family, and that was enough. By the way, there's something I've been thinking about, and I think I should let you all know. What's wrong, Loki? It's about August again. What happened to him? Finn was a bit puzzled. They had just finished talking about him, and now Loki was bringing him up again. He has a special skill. Something even status can't explain. To avoid some trouble, I haven't let him know, but I think it's necessary for you all to understand. A special skill. Yes, an extremely unique skill. Even status only display a name, and I don't know the specific effects. This surprised the three, as Falna were the key to unlocking the human body's talents. If even status couldn't explain August's skill, it meant that, in a sense, it surpassed the Falna system. Such a capability was undoubtedly powerful. Loki, what skill is it? Finn couldn't help but ask. August's rapid advancement was indeed terrifying, and now it seemed there was an explanation. Lust. What? Finn's serious expression froze, Gareth and Reveria beside him were also stunned. The skill is called Lust, and I suspect its origin is from that rascal's desire for desires. This. Everyone felt extremely awkward. Reveria, in particular, knew about August's ambition, he was quite a lascivious guy. Don't think I'm exaggerating. I'm afraid the reason for Ace's upgrade to level 6 is probably due to August's skill. What do you mean? How well do you know Odeus? For a level 6 floor boss, even I would need some means for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Do you remember how she looked when she returned? What about it she was fine? No injuries, no torn clothes. Halfway through, Finn suddenly understood. This was the real issue. 
After defeating the 37th floor boss Odeus, Ace didn't have a scratch on her, which was the biggest problem. Ace was only a level 5, and even if she had a burst of strength to defeat Odeus, it was impossible for her to emerge unscathed. Remember, before this, Ace was always obsessed with improving her strength. However, since being with August, or rather, sleeping with him, her emotions regarding this matter have significantly weakened. That. Thinking about it, it seemed to be true. Now, Ace wanted to stick to August every day and seemed to care less about other things. But Ace's strength has increased. Loki said slowly. The three were seasoned veterans, connecting all the dots and realizing the truth. Lust, as the name suggests, is definitely related to intimate matters between men and women. If I'm not mistaken, both August and Ace have become stronger because of this skill. This speculation sounded ridiculous, but upon closer inspection, it might be true. Speak, Loki, what do you want to do? Do of course, we need to experiment a bit. Loki revealed a mysterious smile, and that smile made Finn and the others instinctively take a step back. Over the years, whenever Loki showed such a smile, it meant someone was in trouble. This time, Loki had set her sights on August and Ace. Reveria. Don't even think about it. Without any hesitation, Reveria directly interrupted Loki and shut down what she hadn't said yet. I haven't finished yet. I know what you want to say. I can tell you clearly, it's impossible. Hee <laughs> hee. A light chuckle, but the invisible mockery was evident. Cough. Loki felt a bit embarrassed, but her face was thick-skinned, so she simply acted as if it didn't matter. Calm down. Go talk to Aki when you go back and discuss it with her. If she's willing, let her give it a try. You're shameless, Loki. I'm doing this for the good for our familia. Loki said shamelessly. She was truly curious about August's skill. Don't even think about it. I won't jeopardize a woman's innocence for your speculation. In matters of love and the body, the loyalty of the elves was terrifying. They only loved one person in their lifetime and would only give themselves to one of the opposite sex. Don't reject it so quickly. What if she is willing? How is that possible August and Aki have no connection? How could it? Halfway through, Reveria suddenly stopped because she remembered that, at the beginning, August and Aki had teamed up. All right, Reveria, go talk to her. It's not forcing her. I won't go. I won't do such a thing. Reveria left directly, refusing to participate in such matters. Loki was disappointed, and her gaze then fell on Finn. Before, Finn and Loki had discussed plans to win over August together. Aki was chosen as one of the targets, and Finn went to talk to her about teaming up with August. Finn. All right, I'll go talk to Aki. However, my attitude is the same as Reveria's. I'll only tell her about it, and I can't guarantee whether she'll go or not. Of course of course he. Sigh. Watching Loki, Finn ultimately didn't say much. Although he didn't join in the conspiracy verbally, his thoughts were the same as Loki's. If this was true, August's value would far surpass his spatial abilities. Chapter 123 Teaming Up for Dungeon Exploration The next day, when the sun was high in the sky, everyone gathered in the familiar manor courtyard. Leading the group were Finn and Reveria. The rest included August and Ace, Tiona, Enchin, Leffy Ya, the last friend, and the temporarily added Aki. The group headed towards the dungeon in a mighty procession. Those who didn't know might think that Loki Familia was about to make some major moves again. With three level 6 members and two level 5 members, this lineup was not an exaggeration even if they were going to subjugate a floor boss. On the way, August and Ace behaved like a couple on an outing, their affectionate gestures making others feel like annoying mosquito. Especially Leffy Ya, who couldn't help but envy them. Everything about August now was what she had always dreamed of. The weakest among them, Leffy Ya, was also at level 3. With her magic, she could defeat level 5 and level 6 monsters easily. Soon, they passed through the upper levels and entered the lower ones. Even Valgong Dragons, the 58th floor monster can be defeated by Leffy Ya's magic, that proving her strength. Die. Tiona swung her large axe, directly finishing off the last monster. 
Her ergo was still in the process of being crafted, so for now, she had to use these weapons temporarily. On the other side, Shin and Lefiya had already cleared the remaining monsters. Finn and Reveria did not take part in the battle, however, they are supervisors for now. As for August and Ace, the two of them were like overpowered characters. Wherever they went, all the monsters were swept away, all killed with a single blow, without exception. On the 16th floor of the dungeon, in a cave, the ground was covered with magical stones. A female elf and a cat girl were bending down to pick up the stones. Not far away, the rest of the group was resting. Why do I have to pick up magical stones? Leffy Ya's face was full of dissatisfaction as she looked at August lying on Ace's legs, enjoying the knee pillow. She hated him to the core. No choice. We're the weakest, so we can only take on a supporting role. Why doesn't that bastard August, who is also level 3, come over? He has space skills. He. Leffy Ya suddenly choked. All the magical stones and loot were carried by August. Although it wasn't hard, it held a significant position within the team. We're about to reach the 18th floor. Do you want go to Rivera? Huh, that town I heard it was destroyed during the previous monster riot, right? It was just rebuilt recently. It's rebuilt again how many times is this? I don't know about that. Although it's a safe floor, it's still in the dungeon, so it can't avoid monster attacks. Finn also sighed. The history of this town was quite ancient. It was established after the elimination of the Dark Factions when Orario transitioned from chaos to stability. Since then, this adventurer town standing in the dungeon had been built. To this day, this town had been destroyed countless times. Countless destructions, countless rebuilds. After all, in this Orario, the 18th floor was the first human checkpoint, holding absolute significance. On the side, August lay on Ace's legs like a landlord, especially his smug appearance, making people want to beat him up. Ace, you spoil him too much. We are in the dungeon now. Tiona couldn't help but say, as she, who had been forced to be annoying Mosquito, was already quite restless from being forced to watch such shows. It's okay. I'll protect August well. I. A supremely gentle phrase made even Finn envy. Such a girlfriend was the dream of all men. Rumble. Just at this moment, the ground suddenly shook violently. Then, the ground cracked open, and a massive, pitch-black monster crawled out. Ah! Monster! Leffy Ya, who was picking up magical stones, was startled and quickly ran back. Aki was also shocked. After sensing the absolute strength of this monster, she chose to temporarily retreat. This is an enhanced variant of the Hellhound, the three-headed Hellhound. Reveria, looking at the giant three-headed hellhound in front of her, exclaimed in shock. At this moment, August opened his eyes and looked at this hellhound enhanced variant. His mood was extremely calm. For August, this type of low probability enhanced variant had become commonplace. As long as he stayed on a floor for a little longer, enhanced variants would appear. August had almost mastered the pattern, making him extremely helpless. Rua or the three-headed hellhound roared angrily, and then flames spewed out of the mouths of its three heads. The combination of three flames directly turned into a scorching flame shockwave heading towards August. Magical attack unfortunately, that's what I'm least afraid of. Fire away. Boom. The next second, August was engulfed by flames. August. No way. How could this be? Don't. Leffy Ya, Shin, Tiona, and Aki all looked worriedly. Finn, Reveria, and Ace, on the other hand, were sitting securely, showing no signs of panic or worry. Ace understood August's strength. Even Alan, a level 6, was easily defeated by August. Facing a three-headed hellhound, there was no problem. As for Finn and Reveria, as well as Ace, it was because of what Loki had told them yesterday. August's strength was formidable, possessing eight skills and magic. Moreover, that special skill, even status couldn't explain. Such a person could not be defeated by the flames of a three-headed hellhound. Full counter. August's voice rang out, and then the overwhelming flames suddenly reversed. The raging flames that were originally coming towards August suddenly lost a head, 
and the flames expanded more than twice their original size, rushing towards the three-headed hellhound. Chapter 124 Rivera Boom! The overwhelming flames directly enveloped the three-headed hellhound. In an instant, the previously menacing three-headed hellhound was severely wounded. It suffered severe burns all over its body, and these flames were its own. How is this possible? Finn couldn't help but shout in disbelief. Not only him, but everyone else was equally shocked. This is August's skill, full counter. Ace took on the role of explaining at this moment. Full counter. Yes, August can rebound back any offensive magical power directed at him with several times the force, and this counter-attack is unrelated to strength. One sentence left everyone dumbfounded. Especially Riveria, August's skill was simply too overpowered, almost the nemesis of all mages. It could rebound all offensive magical powers, and it was unrelated to strength. This meant that as long as there was magic in front of him, it was like his weapon. It was truly terrifying. Why then what about my future? Leffy Ya, who already harbored hostility towards August, suddenly felt her heart turn cold. She was a mage. All her strength came from magic. Now that August had such a skill, could she surpass him and teach him a lesson at this moment, August, holding Zanpakuto, walked step by step towards the three-headed hellhound. Rua or. Watching August getting closer, the three-headed hellhound roared, but its injuries made it more like a toothless paper tiger. Splurred. The Zanpakuto blade pierced directly through the head three-headed hellhound's middle head. Powerful dark magic flowed directly into the three-headed hellhound's body. In a breath's time, it completely destroyed the three-headed hellhound's life. With a thud, the three-headed hellhound turned into a black eye, leaving only a magical stone. So strong. Shin looked at August, who effortlessly dealt with the three-headed hellhound, with surprise. After all, August was currently only level 3. Facing an enhanced variant of a level 3 monster, he easily killed it. This meant that August had long surpassed regular monsters. It's really surprising. Loki was right, he is a monster. Yeah. Finn and Riveria didn't know how to express their feelings at the moment. Although there was Loki's warning beforehand, witnessing it with their own eyes was still shocking. Among the crowd, Aki, looking at the majestic August, had a glint in her eyes. He was so cool, incredibly strong, terrifying potential, and handsome. There was only one man like him in the entire Aurario. Thinking back to what Finn had told her yesterday, she was already smitten. Although she wouldn't be his only woman, attaching herself to such a powerful man, even if she was just a lover, what did it matter different from human concepts, as in Catgirl, Aki had genes that worshipped the strong. Submitting and attaching oneself to the strong was only natural. The strong had everything, and the weak had nothing. This was the law of the world, August, it seems you're not far from leveling up. Do you want to go to the deeper levels? Finn spoke because he wanted to see how strong August really was. Sure, but if we go deeper, we might not be able to return to Orario today. It's okay. We can stay overnight in Rivera. Finn, the prices in that town are ridiculously high. It's okay. I'll personally cover the expenses this time. Then it's not a problem. Finn was both amused and helpless at August's behavior. Although the collaboration with Hephaestus Familia had ended, the profits from the collaboration, before and after, amounted to nearly 400 million valis. With such a huge sum, how could August be short of money thus, the group crossed the 17th floor's crystal wall and finally arrived at the 18th floor. Having been exhausted from grinding monsters on the 35th floor, August had made up his mind not to return to the dungeon for at least 3 to 5 days. However, fate had other plans, and he found himself back here sooner than expected. Arriving at the Rivera, Finn noticed that something was off in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, August, with interest, looked at the sign at the entrance of the town. It had a line of words with a series of numbers behind it. Rivera, number 3340. August was full of surprise. 3340 meant that this town had been destroyed more than 3300 times. This made one marvel at the peculiar nature of time. A 3340, rebuilt again. Tiona, 
having also glanced over due to August's attention, laughed when she saw the number. August expressed his amazement. The use of the word again was particularly fitting. By the way, Goliath on the 17th floor hasn't resp aunt. I thought I could make a good profit. Tiona sighed as she walked, now burdened with a debt of 120 million for forging new weapons. Adventurers from River regularly go to clear Goliath. They say it's to clear the passage and protect the town's safety. Finn smiled faintly, but the others all rolled their eyes. Those bastards are clearly doing it for money. They're protecting the town's safety with this town getting destroyed every three days, rebuilding has become a routine. Tiona sneered at this. The drop items from the floor bosses were high-priced, and many people set up stalls around. They sold ordinary weapons, armor, and daily necessities, but the prices were mostly ten times higher than in Orario. Here, even a regular rye bread was considered a luxury item because everything in the dungeon was scarce. That's why some specialized merchants came to buy here and sell in Orario, making nearly ten times the profit. Of course, adventurers weren't fools. Except when they were truly desperate, no one would spend money here. But the dungeon wasn't a good place either. No one knew what would happen the next second. Every day, people had to purchase here due to irresistible circumstances. Regarding this place, August had only been here once or twice. He carried various delicacies and drinks with him, along with his treasury. He would never be in a situation where he had no choice. Therefore, even if they entered the 18th floor, most of the time they just passed through. At most, they would take a bath in the pond and pool. Chapter 125 Murder Case Following the street inward, they quickly arrived at an area with several inns. After all, most adventurers came here to rest for a night. In this dungeon, everyone had to be cautious because the dungeon was alive and would show its fangs when adventurers were at their weakest. Spending the night in the dungeon is the same as wishing death away. This was why the town was repeatedly destroyed and rebuilt. Adventurers needed a safe place to rest, and within that, there were infinite business opportunities. Walking on the street and looking at the dilapidated wooden houses around, August couldn't help but click his tongue. It's quite primitive, and from the beginning, these houses were built haphazardly. After all, there would be monster riots from time to time, and the town would be destroyed again. There was no need to build anything too good. Captain, something feels off in the atmosphere. Shin looked around with a slight frown. Many merchants here and the gazes of the people around them were somewhat strange. Not only that, there were almost no adventurers on the street. Normally, there might not be many people, but there would be some activity. This indicated that something was definitely wrong. Yeah, after coming in, I haven't seen many people. Finn also noticed the signs around. He squinted his eyes slightly, having a hunch that something had happened. What should we do, Finn? Riveria asked, as Finn was the captain of their familia, and decision-making required his input. Let's inquire first and split up. I don't think we need to, Finn. Hmm. Following Riveria's gaze, August saw a man walking out of a nearby inn. Seeing this, Finn immediately understood. This guy was the boss here, and it was most suitable to go to him when something happened. Plus, they were familiar. Oh, Bors. Um, who's calling me? Hearing the voice, Bors subconsciously turned around. However, when he saw Finn and the others, his expression froze. Bors Elder, a level 3 adventurer, is River representative, and the local big shot self-proclaimed of this town. From Loki Familia the Braver, Nine Hells, Sword Princess, Hormongond, Crusher and the recent Rising Star, Collector. Damn it, don't call me by that name. Tiona immediately protested. Names like Crusher were too unpleasant. What's going on, Bors? Finn walked over and asked. You guys came at the right time. To be honest, meeting you at this time is not a good thing. What's wrong? Someone died in the inn. Bors's face looked unpleasant. This was his territory, and the rules were set by him. This small town was his money-making place. Naturally, he couldn't allow any mess, especially murder. After all, if this place became chaotic, how would he make money now, someone had died here. 
if it wasn't handled properly, it would definitely lead to a significant drop in business. After all, if there was a place where someone might die, and no one returned from there, people who came here were looking for a peaceful and safe place. Do you need help? Help you guys. Bors looked at Finn and the others back and forth, full of suspicion. A group of top adventurers helping here that was too strange. I can't pay you. Bors's first reaction was to refuse to pay. That's not what I mean. Since we'll be staying here tonight, it's better to resolve the issue as soon as possible. Ah, I see. Then come with me. Hearing Finn say this, Bors nodded, and then led the way. At the same time, Bors secretly rejoiced. Finn, Reveria, and Sword Princess were all level 6, and Diona and Jin were both level 5. With their help, he could just freeload. This was simply making a fortune. Finn also saw through Bors's thoughts but didn't expose him. Soon, led by Bors, the group arrived at an inn. A crowd surrounded it, watching the excitement from both inside and outside three layers. It seems a bit troublesome to get in. Finn acted helplessly. There were too many people. Hum. However, in a sudden moment, a terrifying pressure descended. The bustling crowd instantly fell into silence. Make way. August calmly uttered these two words. The next moment, everyone immediately cleared a path without any hesitation. Bors saw this and his eyes were about to pop out. Damn, do you have to be this awesome also, you bastards are too coordinated with him. What he didn't know was that just now, August released a shallow conqueror's hacky. Because it was only released externally, it didn't stun people, but it made them subconsciously fear August. Those with weak wills and low strength couldn't maintain their composure under Conqueror's Haki. Therefore, even if it was just a slight release, it was enough to shock everyone. Like this, led by August, the group walked in. What just happened? I don't know. We just subconsciously made way. That's Loki Familia, right? The guy who spoke just now seems to be the Loki Familia Rising Star, Collector. The one who leveled up to level 2 in less than 10 days. Not only that, it's been just two months, and he's already level three. He's truly a monster. The sound of discussion rose, but August ignored it. Kid, you're really amazing. I've been crawling around in Orario for so many years and I'm only level three. It's nothing. After this trip back, I should be able to reach level four. I dash. Bors was choked for a moment. If looks could kill, August would be riddled with holes. Seeing this, Finn and Reveria smiled, but they didn't say anything. Sure enough, the guys from Loki Familia are all a bunch of bastards. Bors was quite angry. Normally, he could tolerate Finn and others looking for trouble, but even a newcomer like him was like this. However, he could only see the impotence. Didn't he see the three level 6, two level 5 around him who would dare to provoke with such a lineup? Hey, that elf. Huh. Leffy Ya looked around and found out that she was the one being called. She was a little puzzled. I'll give you some money. How about you go beat that guy up? Sorry, I can't do that. Leffy Ya had a black line on her forehead. Even if she wanted to beat him up herself, and even if she could, this was their familia's internal matter. If she involved Bors, it would be different. Chapter 126 Case Analysis Entering the inn, Passing through a corridor, they arrived in a room. The room was simple, with a bed, a table, a chair, and some ordinary decorations, nothing else. On the floor inside the room lay a corpse, its face covered with a white cloth, not to conceal identity, but because the entire face had been peeled off. To avoid trouble, it was covered. As Finn and the others entered, their faces turned serious at the sight. This was a murder case. Upon witnessing the scene, August sighed inwardly. This guy lost his life because of women, but at least he got to enjoy himself before dying. Ah. At this moment, the last person to enter, Leffy Ya, couldn't help but scream when she saw the corpse and the fresh blood on the floor. After all, she was a girl, and under the protection of Loki Familia, she had never witnessed such a thing. All right, calm down. August quickly led Leffy Ya out of the room. After all, she was here to help, and causing trouble would not be appropriate. 
Bors and the innkeeper, Villey, didn't dare to say anything when they saw the situation. After all, it was Loki Familia, and Finn was here. Even if they scolded, they wouldn't have a say. Sorry. Leffy Ya, realizing her inappropriate behavior, apologized. However, when she saw August grabbing her hand, for some reason, even though she felt a little uncomfortable, she did not feel that it was disgusting. It's worth noting that all elves maintained absolute distance from the opposite sex unless they accepted them as partners. Otherwise, touching them would be equivalent to courting death. Let go of me. Huh. -oh. August quickly let go of Leffy Ya's hand, but he couldn't help but feel a bit nostalgic about this tender little hand. Leffy Ya also felt a bit embarrassed but strangely didn't find it annoying. Inadvertently, their interactions had become more familiar over time. If you can't handle it, just wait outside for a moment. We'll be done soon. What I'm not afraid. Really not afraid. Of course not. With determination, Leffy Ya spoke defiantly. However, she was quite nervous about being alone in the room with him. Seeing Leffy Ya's stubbornness, August chuckled and instinctively rubbed her head. Surprisingly, Leffy Ya didn't react immediately and tacitly accepted it. Leffy Ya, are you okay? At this moment, Ace also came out, coincidentally witnessing the scene. Lady Ace. Leffy Ya was first delighted, but then, feeling the movement on her head, her expression froze. August was enjoying the pleasure of petting an elf. You jerk, let go of me quickly. Huh. Leffy Ya directly shook off August's hand, glaring at him in anger. Perfect, Ace, you're also here. Take Leffy out first, Finn will handle things here. Okay. Ace glanced at Leffy Ya, nodded, and noticed Leffy Ya's discomfort. Leffy Ya, upon hearing August's words, was momentarily stunned. Then, slowly, a sense of joy emerged. This was an opportunity to be alone with Lady Ace, something she had dreamed of. Be careful. The person who committed the murder may still be in the town. Don't let your guard down. I understand. Ace then took the infatuated Leffy Ya and left, leaving August smiling. Rebus, with strength above level 5 but below level 6, was supposed to suppress Ace, who was level 5, in the original work. However, now Ace's strength far exceeded the original, and August was also present. Therefore, there was no need to worry about any accidents. Back in the room, Finn looked at August, who nodded, and Finn smiled. At this point, Bors had already squatted beside the corpse, removing the white cloth, revealing a face blurred by blood. It was impossible to recognize who he was. August was relieved that he had asked Leffy Ya to leave early. If she had seen this, who knows what might have happened. Cruel. Shin frowned at the sight. Killing someone was one thing, but torturing the corpse like this was too much. Finn also didn't expect that the corpse would turn out like this. Any clues, Bors? Yes, this guy was with a woman before he died. From the looks of it, it seems like the other party was looking for something, but not for wealth. In the surroundings, a bag was overturned, with some food and potions scattered around. There were also some valuables, and all of these things were still there, indicating that the motive wasn't money. Any clues about that woman? No, based on Villy's previous description, the woman was wearing a cloak, covering herself tightly. Her face couldn't be seen, but apparently, she had a good figure. Isn't that right, Villy? Bors looked at the innkeeper beside him, who was a cat people. That's right. Although her appearance couldn't be seen, she had a great figure, and her scent was quite enticing. Uh. Speaking halfway, Villy realized the atmosphere was off. He looked up and saw Riveria, Tiona, Shin, and even Finn, all looking at him with a hint of hostility. Finn also helplessly covered his forehead, this was supposed to be an investigation of clues, how did it end up like this looking at the potions and valuables on the ground, it seems the other party wasn't after money. So, it's not a revenge killing, but there must be another purpose. Yeah, this guy just rented this room and ordered a lot of food and drinks, as if he had just made a big profit. And there's that woman. Just as Bors was about to continue, he suddenly felt a chill. Looking up, 
he saw Riveria, Tiona, Chen, and even Finn, all looking at him with some hostility. Finn, with a helpless expression, covered his face. Investigating clues turned into this. How did it go off track it seems this person just made a big profit and wanted to enjoy himself. Finn analyzed, as the prices here were more than 10 times higher than in Orario. Eating and drinking extravagantly with a woman here meant a high consumption. However, the clues ended here, they didn't even know who the deceased was, let alone how to proceed with the investigation. For a moment, the entire room fell into silence. They had reached a deadlock. August observed everything like a spectator, seeing it all but not intending to intervene. A sudden reminder would be too strange, and as a newcomer, it was best not to speak in such situations. Besides, August was eagerly anticipating what would happen shortly, the strange creature Rebus, who according to the original work, could suppress a level 5 like Ace. What kind of impact would she bring? Chapter 127 Finesse Solution Finesse Solution as they had no idea about the identity of the deceased, investigating the murder or gathering other information seemed impossible. Just when everything was at a standstill, a person rushed in holding a small bottle. Bors, upon seeing this, immediately smiled and quickly took the small bottle. Villy, turn him over. Oh. Villy obediently went over and flipped the body over, revealing the back. Holding the small bottle, Bors walked over. From the situation, everyone naturally understood what he was about to do. The status thief was a special concoction that could reveal the sealed status. However, because its effect forcibly broke the seal, it was prohibited from being sold in Orario. Nevertheless, this concoction still circulated in the black market. Where there are people, there is a market. This is an age-old truth. Status thief pours, its sacrilege to the deceased. Tisk. You big familia members are always complicating things, so annoying. In the current situation, do you have any other way we don't even know what the other person looks like, how are we supposed to investigate? While saying this, Bors opened the bottle and carefully poured out a drop of concoction. This concoction was extremely expensive, and every drop was like burning money. Considering the special circumstances, Finn didn't say anything, and only Riveria, turned her head, unwilling to witness everything. As the concoction dripped onto the back of the deceased, the sealed status manifested. However, the inscriptions were all divine script, and Bors couldn't recognize them. Hey, high elf over there, you should know this. Hearing Bors's words, Riveria, although reluctant, couldn't turn a blind eye since she was already there. In the end, Riveria turned her head and looked at the back of the deceased. Hashana Dorla, Ganesha Familia, Level 4. As soon as these words came out, the whole room fell into silence. How is this possible a level 4 adventurer don't joke with me? How could a level 4 adventurer be silently killed like this? Bors was so shocked that he almost jumped up. He was just a level 3, but he managed to survive in this dungeon. A level 4 adventurer being silently killed this indicated that the killer was at least level 5. Having a first tier assassin on his turf, this was like walking with a ticking time bomb. Who wouldn't be shocked especially for Bors and the shopkeeper Billy, their backs were soaked in cold sweat. Shivering all over, this first tier assassin was like a walking nuclear bomb. Things have gotten complicated. Finn, too, hadn't expected the deceased to be a level 4 adventurer. This meant that the situation wasn't as simple as a murder. To go through the trouble of killing a level 4 adventurer, especially a member of the Ganesha Familia known for its reputation and top-notch stealth skills, there had to be a special motive. Not all Familias were as talented as the Loki Familia and the Freya Familia. Looking at the chaotic scene and scattered potions, magic stones, and some valuables on the ground, it indicated that the killer was searching for something. However, it was highly likely that the killer hadn't found it yet. That meant the killer might still be in the town. Finn, what should we do? Bors turned his gaze to Finn. It wasn't that he was scared, it was just that he was helpless. After all, he was weak. It can be confirmed that the opponent's strength is at least level 4, maybe even level 5. The murder was committed to obtain something from the deceased, and it's possible that it hasn't been found yet. Therefore, the killer might still be in this town. Hearing Finn say this, 
Boris became even more panicked. Still in the town this raised the danger level for himself. Finn, what should we do next? Boris, gather all the adventurers in the town. We need to investigate each one individually. After all, this matter is a bit tricky. All right, I'll do it immediately. For the sake of his own life, Boris no longer cared about other things. About half an hour later, all the people in the entire town were gathered in the square. Although Boris had limited strength, he was still the boss here, and he had this capability. On the square, hundreds of people stood, while Finn, Riveria, and even August were on the elevated platform. August stood on the platform, overseeing the area with Haki. As an outsider, he was like a small butterfly in the butterfly effect of this world. Therefore, August was also afraid of any unexpected changes in the plot. On the side, Finn began to speak. As the captain of the Loki Familia, and a level 6 veteran adventurer, he had absolute prestige and reputation in Aurario. The people below were very obedient, after all, these strong individuals were not to be trifled with. Not only that, there were a large number of female adventurers below, and Finn, being a level 6 adventurer, had many admirers in Aurario. This scene made Shin, who viewed Finn as everything, grit her teeth. She wished she could rush down and take out all these women. Lady Ace, is mission okay it feels ominous. The black aura emitting from Shin scared the nearby Leffy Ya. It seemed like she was about to undergo a transformation. Ace shook her head, not knowing what was wrong with Shin. It's okay, Leffy Ya, Ace. My Nympho sister is just a bit jealous. Don't worry. Tiona, being an expert at teasing her sister, explained immediately. Looking at Finn on the platform, then at the women below with fiery eyes, and finally at the nearly blackened Shin, Leffy Ya suddenly understood everything. August. At this time, someone in the crowd suddenly left the square and ran towards the mountain. Ace naturally noticed it first and subconsciously looked towards August. Everything was seen by August, but at this moment, he found his target. One person in the crowd emitted magic power similar to monsters. Chapter 128 Jewel Fetus On the small mountain path, a Chianthrope girl clutched a package, her face filled with fear and regret. With a pale face and an anxious expression, she revealed her extremely dire situation. What should I do I'm going to die, definitely going to die. Why did I have to encounter something like this? Thinking about it, tears couldn't help but stream down her cheeks. She couldn't understand, it was just accepting a task, why did she have to face this running in fear, shedding tears, and feeling terrified, this was her current situation. Bang. Suddenly, she bumped into something, then fell to the ground. Subconsciously, fear welled up in her heart. But when she looked up, she saw a man in front of her, with a golden-haired girl standing beside him. Chianthrope girl, it seems there's something wrong with what you're holding. I I don't know what you're talking about. Oh you don't know there was just a murder on the 18th floor, and they are currently investigating the murderer. You, on the other hand, ran away in such a panic. I have enough reason to suspect that you're either the murderer or an accomplice. It's not me, I didn't kill anyone. Then why did you run? If I didn't run, I would definitely be dead. Ah, it seems like we're hearing something valuable. Going to die why would you die? August smiled and said, Ace, on the other hand, frowned and subconsciously drew her desperate sword from its sheath. Wait a minute, your sword princess, and collector from Loki Familia. Stop diverting the topic and answer my question. August was never satisfied with the title collector. I am Lulun Louis, from Hermes Familia. I absolutely didn't kill anyone. Then why did you run or rather, what are you afraid of? I. Lulun hesitated for a moment. She didn't know if she should say because it involved her mission. Not saying judging by your panicked look, could it be that the thing you're holding was stolen from the deceased and this thing is what the murderer wanted, so you're terrified. No, this is the package I received a mission to transport. It's not stolen. Package, so your mission was to transport package. Then, the guy who died must have been the one receiving the cargo. The murderer thought he had received the item, so she killed him but unexpectedly, he hadn't received it yet. 
These words made Lulun widen her eyes. Was this guy's brain really so effective just a normal transport mission? Who could have expected to encounter such a thing if I knew, I wouldn't have been greedy for this opportunity. Who could have thought we'd run into such a situation? Lulun also felt like crying. She thought it was a lucrative job, but it turned out to be a death sentence. Serves you right for being greedy. Lulun lowered her head. She couldn't argue, it was indeed because of her greed. All right, Jian Throat Girl, give me the package, and you can go. But. But nothing, if you're not afraid of death, you can pretend I didn't say anything. Fine, here. Without hesitation, Lulun handed the package to August. Money or life, she would definitely choose life. On the side, Ace also looked at August in surprise. She hadn't expected August to be so formidable, unraveling everything at once and obtaining this crucial item. This murder case was likely revolving around this package. August looked at the package in his hand and a cold smile appeared on his face. Inside must be the jewel fetus mentioned in the original work, a kind of seed similar to the corrupted spirit. Behind all this was the robe sage from Aurano's side. Subconsciously, August glanced at Ace. In the original work, Ace received a mission from that sage in the dungeon. This was a scheme involving Ace and the Loki Familia. Entrust the unfortunate child who died to receive a certain item, then let Lulun transport the item, and finally give Ace a mission. All interconnected. Truly a clever scheme by the centuries-old sage. H does not dull his cunning. August didn't care who the antagonist was, who the protagonist was, or what would happen to Orario and the dungeon. The reborn August only cared about the well-being of those he cherished. But now, Ace was entangled in this, making August very displeased. Given the chance, August would definitely twist off the skull of that sage and use it as a football. Looking at the package in his hand, August could clearly feel a pure malevolence and the filthy magic power emanating from it. This was August's ability as the Lord of Sin. He could distinctly sense the breath of malice. The corrupted spirit was filled with pure malice toward this world and the entire dungeon, desiring to break free from its prison. A horrified expression appeared on Lulun's face as she watched silently, but August's cold gaze made her take several steps back, filled with fear. August, what's inside should we take a look? Ace, for some reason, wanted to uncover the truth about this package. Seeing this, August squinted his eyes. Although it was a corrupted spirit's seed, it was still in spirit. Was there a faint resonance between it and Ace due to their shared spirit lineage? No. Before he could finish, the package's cloth suddenly unraveled. Then, a green jewel appeared in front of the three, like a crystal ball. Inside it was a fetus that made people shudder at first glance. As soon as Ace saw the jewel fetus, she froze. Thump 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 thump. Ace's heart pounded loudly, a strange feeling arose, making her feel both unfamiliar and familiar. Originating from the resonance of their bloodline, it began at this moment. Boom. Suddenly, the fetus in the jewel opened its eyes. This eerie scene startled Lulun, who took several steps back in fear. Coincidentally, Ace and the fetus eyes met, and in that moment, the atmosphere changed. In an instant, Ace felt her head spin, followed by nausea, dizziness, numbness, and the loss of control over her limbs. The girl known as the Sword Princess collapsed. Chapter 129 Rebus Ace August quickly supported Ace, while the jewel fetus was casually thrown to the ground. This thing itself wasn't good, and compared to Ace, it was even more worthless. Lulun looked at the jewel fetus on the ground, and the sharp beastman instincts made all the hair on her body stand on end. So uncomfortable. Ace's face looked awful, and August felt a sense of self-blame. He shouldn't have let Ace come along. One was a half-spirit, and the other was a seed created by the corrupted spirit. The shared bloodline tainted Ace's spirit when the two intersected. August quickly wrapped the jewel fetus again, and Ace began to recover. Shrill. A crisp and loud flute sound suddenly rang out, causing August's pupils to contract. Boom. Around the 18th floor, a series of roars echoed as massive man-eating flower monsters appeared from various places, even in the small town. Seeing so many monsters suddenly appearing, Finn frowned. Monster Riot how is that possible this is a safe floor? 
Lefiya's face was full of disbelief because it was impossible for monsters to appear on this floor. She didn't know that the so-called safety was only relative, otherwise, the town wouldn't have been rebuilt thousands of times. Tiona, Shin, Lefiya, get ready for battle. Finn made a prompt decision and assigned tasks. Understood. Yes, Captain. I got it. The three immediately entered combat mode. Even Lefiya had expedition experience, though she hadn't graduated yet, it didn't mean she couldn't handle it, after all, she was a level 3 adventurer. Then, the wild Tiona charged directly into the monster group, like a berserker tearing everything apart. Shin, holding a spare great axe, also charged into the monsters, eliminating them one by one. With Tiona and Jin providing cover, Lefiya began chanting, preparing to unleash magic. It seems things have become complicated. Where are Riveria, Ace, and August? Don't know, they left suddenly a while ago. Probably something happened. In that case, let's be on high alert. Okay. The two, having been comrades for decades, naturally had unparalleled tacit understanding. On the mountain, Lulun watched the chaotic adventurer town below, her face turning pale with fear. Ace had now recovered, although still feeling a bit uncomfortable, there was no longer any issue. Shush. Just then, a sound of clashing armor echoed. August followed the source of the sound, and then, a man in armor slowly walked over. However, despite having a rough male face, it was like a mask, extremely stiff, and filled with a lifeless atmosphere. Finally appeared. Compared to everything, you're the source, right that guy, you killed him. The other stopped, gazing at August, Ace, and the jewel fetus wrapped in a package. Found out but it doesn't matter, this disguise is useless now. A woman's voice came from beneath the man's face. Immediately, the other tore off the face and removed the armor. She was not a man, instead, she was a hot-bodied woman. A human face how is that possible? Lulun witnessed all of this, making her almost vomit. August observed the woman in front of him. Whether it was her figure or appearance, she could be described as stunning. Without exaggeration, in modern times, she would definitely be considered a goddess-level figure. Unfortunately, she was not human, she had been transformed into a strange creature. And that unlucky guy who died, although he was killed, he enjoyed the services of this woman in front of him before his death. I guess you're looking for this, right? August picked up the jewel fetus from the ground, but to avoid making Ace uncomfortable, he didn't unwrap it. Hand it over. The moment the women named Reva saw the jewel fetus, her expression became slightly serious. You can come and take it yourself. I thought you were a clever person, but it turns out you're still foolish. Reva said slowly, drawing her weapon, a large sword. August tossed the jewel fetus into his inner world with one hand and then took out his Sanpakuto from his treasury. In that instant, Rebus moved like an untamed wild horse, rushing straight towards August. The large sword in her hand aimed for August's neck. Die. There was no fancy move, the sole purpose of the attack was to kill the opponent. August, seeing this, naturally didn't hold back and met her head on with the blade. Clang. The collision between the large sword and Zanpakuto's blade emitted a strong force, surprising Rebus. Such a powerful force, above level 5, perhaps level 6. Sorry, I'm still level 3. Level 3 humph. Without continuing to waste words, she coldly snorted, and then Rebus continued to attack August. As a creature active in dungeon, to maintain this body, she had to continuously devour magic stones, and magic stones required hunting monsters. Therefore, every move from Rebus was extremely decisive and ruthless, designed to bring the target to its death. In contrast, August inherited his sword style from the first generation the sword style, Anohana Yachiru. It was also a path of slaughter and combat, and his moves were aimed at taking the opponent's life. Thus, on this hillside, August and Rebus continued to battle. Spurt. Suddenly, the blade in August's hand flashed, leaving a blood stain on Rebus's body. With a few quick jumps, Rebus and August distanced themselves. Looking at the wound on her stomach, Rebus's face turned serious. Your strength is at least level 6, maybe even above level 6. 
she felt the pressure, realizing that the opponent's strength was far above her own, making her no match. Thinking of this, she began to consider a retreat. Since she couldn't win, wasting time was meaningless. As she surveyed her surroundings, Riva saw Ace's face, and her pupil suddenly contracted. Arya. Ace didn't notice Rivas's abnormality, but August caught it. Without any hesitation, August directly used his shadow's magic, and the pitch black shadow blades enveloped the surroundings. August also rushed forward. If she agitated Ace, that was something August wouldn't allow. August didn't allow anyone to harm Ace, even if it made him uncomfortable. Chapter 130 All Dust Settles Spurt A shadow blade mercilessly pierced through Rivas's shoulder. This was not the end, following the second, third, and in the blink of an eye, eight shadow blades approached, dismembering Rebus. Four shadow blades floated around, ready to strike. Who are you? The smell of death permeated her body. Before her death, she looked at August in disbelief. Although she knew little about the information regarding Orario, she had never heard of such a powerful adventurer who left her helpless. I am a demon. Your existence is a threat so you must die. Heh, I never expected to die in this place. She was unwilling, she still had her own goals unfinished. However, circumstances did not favor her, and she no longer had a chance. Swish. The shadow blades descended, cleanly severing her head. August showed no mercy despite facing a woman. Witnessing the scene from her hiding place, Lulun was instantly terrified. It was too brutal. A beautiful woman like Rebus, and August decisively cut off her head without hesitation, it was inhuman. Even Ace didn't expect August to kill the opponent so decisively and in such a manner. Rumble. At the same time Rebus was killed by August, a terrifying flame erupted into the sky. August subconsciously looked over and saw that within the entire 18th floor and the entire river, all monsters and buildings were incinerated in a few breaths. This was Orario's top-tier mage, the Nine Hell, Reverial Joe's Alf. In the face of the raging flames, all monsters turned into ashes. This was why mages held an unrivaled position in Orario. A powerful mage could overturn the battlefield in an instant. Like Reveria, perhaps in one-on-one -on -one combat, she wasn't very strong because casting magic required time. However, during an expedition, especially when encountering large groups of monsters, she became a firepower turret, and one spell was enough to solve all problems. Swish. At this moment, Finn appeared. Seeing August with twelve dark shadow blades floating around him, Finn was shocked. Moreover, the pressure August gave him at this moment made him feel as if he was facing a powerful enemy rather than a newcomer who had recently joined the familia. Finn's heart surged with tidal waves. He trusted his instincts very much after so many years of adventuring. This intuition had saved him countless times. August, you. It seems everything is settled. Well, what happened here? A murderer appeared and was killed by me. Ha killed by you. Following August's gaze, Finn found a grayish-brown magic stone in the distance, completely different from the ordinary purple magic stones. Just like monsters, when a monster person died, they would turn into ashes and completely disappear, leaving only the magic stone as a core. Is this a magic stone a magic stone similar to the new monster species? Could it be that the murderer is a monster? No, the murderer is a monster, a monster with a human form. It's no different from an ordinary person, possessing intelligence and strength comparable to level 5. This. Once August said this, Finn didn't know what to say. He could accept the previous information, even if he was surprised by the existence of monster like that. But when August mentioned the strength comparable to level 5, Finn found it hard to believe. After all, August was only level 3. If the opponent's strength was comparable to level 5, it meant that August's strength had reached or even surpassed level 5. August is very strong. Earlier, when Alan and Gulliver brothers from Freya Familia wanted to ambush August, he defeated all of them alone. Ah, Ace threw out another bombshell, leaving Finn dazed. Alan who was a veteran level 6 like himself, and the opponent's speed was extremely fast. Even he wouldn't dare to claim to defeat the opponent, let alone the Gulliver brothers. You. I. All right, Finn, 
don't you me? Today's matter is considered closed. Yeah. Finn heard the unspoken words in August's words, so he dispelled the idea of continuing to ask. Meanwhile, a person in a black robe lurking in the shadows observed all this. Rebus was actually killed. This is inconsistent with the plan. Also, this August, too terrifying. There is an even more terrifying power hidden within him. Glancing deeply at August's back, the person in the black robe slowly left. August also felt the gaze of someone spying on him. Subconsciously looking around, he activated the observation hacky with full force, but there was no harvest. And so, August, Ace, and Finn returned to the Rivera. Ah! My town, destroyed again. Upon returning, they saw Gors looking at the once again ruined town with a heartache on his face. After all, the town had just been rebuilt not long ago, and now it was ruined again due to this attack. All right, Bors, this is not the first time. Get up. Don't talk without experience. Every time I encounter people from your Loki familia, there is no good thing. Don't say that. We are friends. What friend your mage could have killed monsters with a fire, why did she burn the town too do you know how much I've lost? Bors was heartbroken, the entire town was constructed from wood. This time, everything was burned to the ground, and the losses inside were countless. All right, Bors, let me tell you some good news. The murderer has been killed. Hum, the murderer is dead who did it? Uh, it was resolved by someone from our familia during the attack just now. This is considered the only good news. Finn didn't say that it was August who defeated the murderer, and Bors didn't think much about it. This matter passed like this. At the same time, August and Ace returned here. In the inquiry, Leffy Ya learned about the terrifying August's strength from Ace. This made Leffy Ya feel extremely exhausted, her revenge seemed hopeless. Tiona and Chin were also helpless, they were already considered geniuses, but August was a monster, not a human. 